Hi, beautiful people. Um, thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is for those of you who are looking into being either a tutor full-time, part-time as a side gig, or even looking into another education venture. These are five struggles that I have had to deal with in my tutoring business that I slowly am still overcoming. So let me go ahead and explain to you what I mean by these struggles. Okay, so before we get into it, Make sure that you like and subscribe our channel. If you are new, thank you so much. I am so excited. Um, and those of you who are returning, thank you. Make sure you like and share this video so it can help others. So, okay, I don't know why I'm getting so excited because these are struggles. These are not, you know, different things that is very exciting. But like I said previously, these are things that I have overcome or still overcoming and finding different ways to overcome these struggles, okay, or deal with the struggles. All right, so um, they're not in any order. These are just random struggles. I just kind of put them in an order, but not in a specific order, okay? So the first one is saying goodbye. I think I still struggle with this because I guess internally, it's hard to say goodbye to any of my students. And it is very, very difficult because I might have them for a short of my amount of time and then once we get into the rhythm of things is, okay, well, this is our last session. I hate saying that. Um, but in good news, just like any other educator, you know, you feel confident um, that you've done your service with that particular student and they have graduated and accomplished all of the learning targets that we have set out for them, the objectives, all of that. And saying goodbye, it's very, very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to say goodbye. But I do get happy because they have met all of their marks, they're where they need to be, and now they're more confident in their learning. So I do get excited but it's really hard as a struggle to say goodbye um, I do continue talking with their parents um, just to make sure that they're still okay and confident in everything and sometimes the goodbyes are turning into see you laters um, not in like a bad way but sometimes they get into maybe an area that they struggle in and they do come back sometimes not all the time but I think that it is a struggle just to say goodbye or a see you later kind of thing or not knowing when it's a see you later. So it is a struggle, okay? Okay, so the next one that I feel that it is a struggle, um, and this is, I guess, as a teacher in general, I am relating a lot of this to education, but I do have, or I'm sorry, not just education, but as tutoring, um, but I do have a lot of teaching background, so I do relate this a lot to being teachers. And if you are a tutor, you are actually teaching either one-on-one -on -one or a small group, so you're a teacher automatically anyway. So, um, piecing together all of the information in, within your sessions. Let me explain. So when you have a student that comes to you or a new student client, usually you already know what their target is, whether they need assistance in math, where they need assistance in reading or writing or study skills. You kind of have an idea of where to start. However, once you get into those sessions, you have to figure out, okay, well, they're struggling in reading, so that also will not, they'll have a struggle in math as well with word problems or different things of that nature. So you do have to piece certain things together. Um, maybe if it's reading, the parent may not know exactly what. They know that it's reading, but they don't know if it's comprehension, if it is actually the phonics part of it or, or phonemic awareness, 
They're not sure if it's a spelling deficit or anything like that. So you have to piece together all of that information while you're doing in sessions or while you're in sessions. And I tell parents this, um, it took me a while, <laughs> but I tell parents this like, hey, even though your child is struggling in reading, it may take us a little bit of time, maybe I would say about three sessions to actually pinpoint the true struggle, okay? Because one, you're getting to know your client, you're getting to know, and I'm going to talk about another struggle with that too. But getting to know your client, you're getting to know how they learn, um, what is best fit for them and stuff. So it does take time, okay, to really piece together things and figure out what else is needed, okay? The third is, not everyone learns the same or works the same way. And I am very a hands-on teacher, okay? Meaning that I like to do active learning. We are not going to sit here and do worksheets all the time. We may do some, but we're not gonna do worksheets all the time. We are gonna do activities. We are going to move around. We're going to talk mostly about explaining either what we're reading or explaining the math concept that we are learning or writing or even study skills. So a lot of things I do is hands-on. However, not all of my students are hands-on, which believe it or not is true. Especially when it comes to middle school and high school, they tend to <laughs> not be so hands-on um, with different things. They want to make sure that it's whatever they're doing in classroom exemplifies what we're doing inside of our sessions, okay? So not everyone works the same. You have auditory listed, I mean auditory um, learners. You also have kinesthetic learners. You have visual learners. These are all different types of learners that I have to again at the beginning figure out what is best for them to accommodate so i feel that's a struggle because sometimes i'm like let's do a project let's do something fun and see how you know it looks in the real world yes it does work it is really really good but sometimes it can be a little pushy or overwhelming for my students so it's just like okay let's just sit here and read a book real quick um, and get all of that and then maybe I can put in a little bit of hands-on learning but it just depends like I said it depends on the student and how they actually learn uh, next one is I work with multiple grade levels so it is become a challenge that I'm still dealing with to switch my mind away from elementary to high school in one day the next session. Sometimes I would have a child that is in third grade and then I have to switch my brain within 15 to 20 minutes to ninth grade. I don't know about you, but for me, it is a challenge because I'm more animated, more hands-on, more, um, I wouldn't say like in your face, but <laughs> with the elementary because they need a little bit more scaffolding. Well, with ninth grade, they're high school. They're a little bit more independent. They're coming to you for a certain learning target, um, not necessarily like how to do something. Like they don't need that much hands-on or that much help. It's just a little bit of guidance for them. So it does, it is a challenge for me because I am more hands-on and they're like, once I get to ninth grade, it's like, whoa, Miss Franklin, like calm down. <laughs> I got this, you don't have to do this. Or, you know, tone it down a little bit because I do have different voices for my kiddos. So it just depends, um, but it does become a challenge. I tutor all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade. So you can imagine if I have a kindergartner one day, then, the next day I have an eighth grader, and then in one day I may have a first grader and a seventh grader. I mean, it does change and I get, you know, <laughs> just a little bit, um, but it just depends. So with all of that, not to say that I mix up the contents because I do prep 
for all of my sessions way in advance, okay? And I will actually make a video to let you know and to show you how I actually prep for my tutoring sessions. We're gonna do like a tutoring preparation session, okay? Um, just so you can see how everything goes down and how I organize things and stuff. I think I really have a good system, but you guys can let me know if I can even make it even better. I love that. All right, so that's one, switching my brain, multiple grade levels. Okay, last but not least, this has been a challenge and I don't think that I will be able to change this particular challenge only because it still is beneficial. It just um, depends on your child. So this one is late schedules. My tutoring business is open from nine all the way to seven o'clock p.m. 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And usually between the hours of nine and I would say say probably 9 and 11, I'm usually answering phone calls, um, doing all of my preparation, things of that nature. I am answering emails. I'm basically doing administrative stuff during that time. When it comes to about 12 to 2 in the afternoon, that is when I'm doing my consultations because that is parents' lunch times. Um, they can actually set that appointment to come in real quick, chat with me <laughs> during their lunch, their work lunch hours, and then go back to work if they need to. And then around 3.30 all the way to 7, I usually tutor during that time. And this is really pretty much after all my students get out of school. <laughs> they are coming straight to me. So again, I will actually share what I do to prepare, but it does get a little bit tiring for my students, not myself, because I have the energy all day. I feel like until like 11 o'clock, then that's when I'm kaput at night. But <laughs> with my students, I feel that since they've been in school all day, when they get to me, it's like, oh, do we have to learn? Now, again, I will show you in a video how I do to prepare and prep to get my students a little bit more um, excited during our sessions and kind of give them a little bit of energy during that time so we can learn a little bit more and get to those learning targets. And they're completely fine. Sometimes they don't even want to leave after their session, I'm like, don't need to go, I have a next session, or it's almost time to close, I gotta go home to my babies. So, um, but it's, I, it's still rewarding, I love it. But, like I said, late schedules can be a challenge because you do have those children who are very, very tired. You, un you have to understand, as a tutor, if you are working late, late hours, with students, they can be very exhausted. So you have to find different ways to get um, them a little bit prepped up so they can understand what you are teaching them and what they're learning. The other thing I do recommend, I only work, um, I do not work on Mondays. That's my admin day. But I do not take any students on Mondays, um, specifically because that is the first day of the school week. They are already getting a lot of information during that time from their teachers, trying to get back in the routine of things. It's, yeah, it's a lot. And then um, just Mondays, just have them not here. I can prep a lot of my sessions during that day and answer emails if I need to. I work my office or my sessions can be scheduled from Tuesday all the way to Saturday. I actually make sure that I have Saturday appointments available because some parents do not want to come, you know, during their child's dinner time, it's almost bedtime. They don't want to have tutoring during that time. They want their child to relax during that day. So I do offer hours on Saturdays from nine until four o'clock to make sure that they are still able to come in and get some type of tutoring even on the weekends, um, which is really, really good. And it seems that it's very helpful for parents too because they do have those long hours as well. They work, right? So making sure you have flexibility during that time. So late schedules, I feel like it's a struggle too.
Okay, those are my top five struggles within my tutoring business. I know you guys may have gone through some struggles yourself and it may have not been the same struggles that I went through or same obstacles. I shouldn't say struggles because these are just hurdles, obstacles that you have to go through, right? So in the comment section below, if you have had any struggles or not struggles, but obstacles or hurdles that you had to go through within your tutoring business or tutoring in general, go ahead and put it in there. Let me know how you overcame those particular obstacles, how you went through them. Let me know how you did it, <laughs> okay? Um, like I said previously in this video, I am going to make another video to show you how I prepared for my sessions and just give you a behind the scenes look. So make sure that you stay tuned. So if you have not subscribed to our channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. All right. Until next time, keep loving and keep learning and I will see you all soon. Bye.